Hey, this is John Shutt. I'm a smart contract engineer at UMA, and in this video I'll show you how to set up a DAO with OSNAP. OSNAP is a governance tool from UMA that makes it easy to vote off-chain with Snapshot and execute the results on-chain with a safe without relying on a multi-sig or needing to write any code. To deploy OSNAP, you'll need two things, a safe and a Snapshot space. Let's assume you have both of those set up. If not, there are links to safe and Snapshot tutorials in the video description and OSNAP's documentation. So from your safe, you need to install the Zodiac app. OSNAP uses the Zodiac framework to interact with your safe. So from Zodiac, you want to deploy the UMA OSNAP module. You have a few configuration options. First, select USDC or WETH as your collateral currency. This is the token that proposers will post as a bond when proposing to execute transactions on-chain. And we'll set the bond to 1 WETH, maybe 0.1. Uh, so here you see a warning. Our default minimums are to set a high enough bond to create an incentive for disputers, which we'll get into later. So. You can adjust the size of the bond, but you don't want to go too low. The bond is the incentive for third-party validators to check that the proposal is correct and protect your DAO from bad proposals. Anyone can dispute a bad proposal and earn half the proposer's bond, and the UMA community watches Oracle proposals 24-7. The liveness period can also be configured and is set to 24 hours by default. This is how much time validators will have to review and dispute proposals. So in our case, we're going to set liveness to be shorter, because this is going to be a test space. So we can start with, let's say, a uh, three-minute liveness. The only reason we're setting it so low is that you can actually walk through the process in this kind of demo space. And for the same reason, we can set a smaller bond, too. Remember, don't do this in production. Now, the next thing that you'll need is your snapshot space URL. So we'll copy that from here. This is just a demo snapshot space that we set up. We have a minimum voting period that's specified in a voting quorum. We'll set these to be lower too. Say 0.1 hours. Uh, that doesn't work. Uh, one hour. So the rules are going to be stored on-chain with the OSNAP contract, and it will tell UMA's validators how to handle your request. All right, we'll just wait on that to be processed. Once it's deployed, this module will allow you to propose transactions to your safe. As long as those transactions were approved on Snapshot, they can be executed. You don't have to use a multi-sig for execution, which makes your DAO more efficient, democratic, and decentralized. So now that we've deployed the module, we want to copy this contract address, and we're going to use it to set up SafeSnap. So in Snapshot, you can go to Settings for your Snapshot space, scroll all the way down, and you can add a plugin. And you want to install the Gnosis SafeSnap plugin. We're going to set the chain ID to 5 because this is girly, testnet. If you were on Ethereum mainnet, it would be 1. If you were on some other chain, it would be something else. And there's a placeholder here where you can enter your module address that we copied earlier. And it's as easy as that. Now that OSNAP is configured, we can actually go and create a proposal and execute it from the snapshot interface. So let's go do that. All right, so this is going to be a test proposal, test execution with OSNAP. We're going to continue. And we'll do just basic voting for this, for, against, or abstain. We'll set the voting period to be very short, because this is just a demo. And we'll set this to a couple of minutes in the future. Now remember, uh, in production, 
you actually do have a minimum required voting period. And that's going to prevent somebody from creating a snapshot vote that just has a really low quorum and a really low voting period and trying to execute something that the DAO didn't actually approve. And the rules that are stored on chain are going to ultimately overrule whatever your snapshot configuration is. So you don't have to worry about the snapshot admin going rogue too much. Um, bad proposals will still get disputed if the snapshot voting period or quorum were too low. So now that we're here, we can actually add some transactions. Uh, you can add any kind of transaction. There's a really nice transaction builder built into Snapshot for kind of common transaction things. You can define contract interactions. You can plug in raw transactions that you might have been doing manually with a multi-sig up to this point. But we're just going to transfer a tiny bit of ETH, and we'll send it to our address here. This is 0001. And we'll just do one transaction, but you can add as many as you want. They'll all be executed at once, uh, once the voting period is done. So we'll go ahead and publish this. And I'm going to vote for this. We have a really simple kind of voting scheme. Uh, it could be token-based voting. It could be weighted voting. It could be whitelist-based voting. Really anything that you want to define through a snapshot space strategy uh, is enforceable through OSNAP. So you don't have to change anything about your snapshot configuration. Great, the vote is in. And we'll probably fast forward for a couple of minutes until the voting period is done. Okay, so it's now 8.09. That means the voting period is over. And we're able to actually go ahead and propose execution of that transaction we defined on chain. The first step is to approve the bond. And remember, this is the proposer bond. So if the proposer is wrong, if the snapshot vote wasn't confirmed, or if somebody is going outside of snapshot entirely and trying to propose something through your OSNAP module, they're going to lose this bond when they get disputed. I'll just take a second to approve that. So now we can go to the next step, where we request execution. And this is going to make the actual on-chain proposal. So that transaction's pending. Once it goes through, we'll actually be able to see this proposal through UMA's Oracle UI. And remember that UMA has a very active community of validators settling DAO proposals, prediction markets, and insurance claims 24-7. And the more DAOs that use OSNAP, actually, the more eyes will be watching the Oracle. So you don't have to rely only on yourself disputing bad proposals. You should get disputes from third parties because they have that bond as a financial incentive. So let's take a look. So I think that this is our new proposal. So it's using the Zodiac identifier within UMA's system. Remember, Zodiac is the framework that we use to build OSNAP and connect it to a safe. OK, so this is our proposal. You can actually see it through UMA's Oracle UI. So any third party can come in here and dispute it. You can see the liveness period. There's still a few minutes left to dispute. So if we wanted to dispute this, we could just connect our wallet and we could dispute it through this UI. Uh, you could also dispute it through Etherscan. You could dispute it from the command line. It's an open system and anybody can come in and claim that proposer's bond if they put in a bad proposal. Also, in the Oracle UI, we make it very easy to validate whether something passed or not. You can see those rules that you defined earlier when you deployed your OSNAP module uh, pull from your OSNAP contract into the Oracle UI. So you can really clearly see what the quorum is, what the voting period is, um, any additional rules that you specify. And the interesting thing about UMA is that because it's humans under the hood, uh, you can actually write natural language rules like this and enforce them on chain. So OSNAP is really taking advantage of UMA's Oracle flexibility to be able to define something like this that you couldn't easily do through a uh, price feed style Oracle. This explanation also is linking to the unique IPFS CID for the particular snapshot vote that you're interested in. So if you go here, you would see all of the transaction details and everything else in, a, I think, a JSON format from snapshot side. So you can verify that, one, there actually was a snapshot vote on this, and whether or not that vote was successful. The countdown timer has 25 seconds left. 
Let's fast forward a bit and go back to Snapshot. Now you can see on Snapshot, while we're waiting, uh, there's a note of when you'll be able to actually execute this. So now that we're past the liveness period, we can go in and execute this directly through Snapshot. And you don't need any special permissions. It doesn't have to be a multi-sig signer doing this. It can just be anybody because you've now approved this transaction through your decentralized governance. So let's go ahead and execute. Transaction is going through. Great, we did it. So now this is refreshing, and it's going to tell us that all transactions have been executed. So whenever you're looking back in the past, you can see that you don't repropose this because it's already been executed. And if we go to Gurley Etherscan, we can check our address, and we can actually take a look at that incoming transaction. And so if we take a look at Etherscan, you can actually see that incoming transaction to this address from our safe for the amount that we specified. And that's it. It's very easy. If you integrate OSNAP with your DAO, please let us know. We're big fans of DAOs moving toward decentralized governance and would love to highlight your project. Just reach out to us at integrations.umaproject.org and let's talk more.